you should already have watched my uh, GCSE video on moments. Uh, this is simply to extend uh, and perhaps enrich a little what we did there so that it covers all of A level. The definition of moment that we did at GCSE was that the moment of a force was the size of the force times the perpendicular distance of its line of action from the pivot. And we didn't really mess about too much with the uh, definitions of line of action and pivot. Really all we did was to state it but didn't actually use it. So line of action is literally the line along which a force acts. So what I mean is if that's my force then this is the line of action of that force. The point of application is literally the place the force is applied. You might say, well, why do we need to define that? Well, if you have this force, that's the point of application. This force, that's the point of application. And again, that's quite important from the point of view of calculating moments, because here we have the point of application of this force on this object. So those are the definitions. We'll come back to look at moments in a moment or two. Ha, excuse the pun. Uh, equilibrium. If something is in equilibrium, it is not accelerating. Now, in order for it to be in equilibrium, there must be two conditions satisfied. One, no resultant force. Because from Newton's second law, you know if there is a resultant force, there will be an acceleration. Two, no overall moment about any point. So previously you've only had this condition. You've considered something to be in equilibrium if there is no resultant force acting on it. And of course a special case of equilibrium is when it is stationary, not moving. But that is a special case of equilibrium because it could be moving at constant velocity and be in equilibrium. Indeed, it would, if there's no moment, and moving at constant velocity be uh, in equilibrium. So, you have these two conditions now, where previously, really, you've only considered uh, the first condition when we've been looking at equilibrium. If we take a beam and let's have a force acting at some angle to that beam. That would be the line of action of that force. If we then consider our pivot here, 
and we want the perpendicular distance of the pivot from the line of action there. So there's our x and let's call this distance d. So the distance of the point of application from the pivot is d. But what we need for our moment is the perpendicular distance of the line of action from the pivot. So here's our right angle, right? So, bit of geometry then. Well, if that's theta, then that angle in there is 90 minus theta. So that's theta. And so sine theta equals x over d. So x equals d sine theta. So the moment of f about O then would be the size of f times d sine theta. So we can say, we can draw this triangle and we can work out x, or we could say the only part of f which has a moment about O is the vertical component of f. So then you have the vertical component of f, which of course is f sine theta. If you follow my uh, convention of I want this component, so I rotate away from the angle to get to that component, and therefore I take the sine of this angle. f sine theta times d is the moment. The component horizontally which would be going that way. Well, that goes through, oh, the line of action of that force, that component of F, goes through O, and therefore the perpendicular distance of its line of action from O is zero. It is no distance from O because it goes through O. Therefore, we can completely ignore the horizontal component and it is only uh, the vertical component that has a moment. The implications of this having two conditions for equilibrium. You are mostly going to be using both conditions in order to find out your unknowns. So let's say, for example, we have a beam acting, sorry, a beam supported at both ends. So the scenario you have here maybe is a bridge. So you have your bridge which is supported on either side of your valley or whatever there will be a reaction at this end this end of the bridge sitting on the valley wall a reaction on this end likewise if we imagine our bridge to be a uniform bridge 
then in the middle here there will be the weight of the bridge let's say the bridge is 50 meters and let's imagine we have a lorry here of let's say 2,000, 20,000 kilograms at some distance 20 meters from the right hand side. So let's say we know the weight of the bridge is uh, a million kilograms uh, times g is better than newtons. So we have two unknowns here, right? We don't know this, we don't know that. So what we can do, if we say one end of the bridge is A and the other end is B, our first step is to take moments about one end. Doesn't matter which end I choose, I'm gonna pick A. The point is, I am picking a point through which one of my unknown forces acts and therefore I can ignore it because it will have no moment about this point. So if I take my clockwise moments, I've got a million G times 9.8 times, well it was a uniform bridge so this is in the middle and therefore it's times 25 meters plus my 20,000 G times, well that's going to be 30 meters from A 20 meters from this end, 50 meter bridge, 30 meters from A so those are my clockwise moments Anti-clockwise, well, I've got R2 times 50 because the perpendicular distance of R2's line of action from A is 50. So the only thing that I don't know in this equation is R2. That leads me to the value of R2. I just divide all of this by 50. I've got R2. My second step then is to say, well, the some of the forces will equal zero for equilibrium and we certainly hope that our bridge is in equilibrium so if we say well we've got r1 and r2 up and we just worked out what r2 was right equals w plus uh, the weight of the lorry And because the only thing we don't know here now is R1, we can work out R2. So your general approach, your standard approach, although you don't always have to use it, standard approach is take moments about a point through which one of your unknown forces acts. In this example, they are both reactions at the pivots. And thereby work out one of your unknowns and then apply your second condition, which is the total of the forces equals zero. And because all of these forces are nicely vertical, uh, that's simple. So that, that's really your uh, A-level approach. So let's look at an example then and this is a question that I've used quite a lot at A level. So here we have a spring balance reading seven newtons, which is attached to this horizontal uniform bar. Notice uniform, so its center of mass will be in the middle. 0.15 meters from the pivot. 
we have a 2.0 Newton weight hanging on at 0.35 meters from the pivot and the whole length is 0.44. So, first part of the question, what is the magnitude of the moment about the pivot due to the tension in the spring? So here we have uh, a tension in the spring of seven Newtons. So that'll be the force times the distance which is 7 newtons times 0.15. Now, I didn't write in the 7.0, but note I've got two sig figs here, two sig figs here. 7 times 0.15, of course, is And the two sig figs, that would be 1.1 Newton meters. So that's my answer to uh, A part one, but I'm gonna use this 1.05 if I have to use uh, the value in any further calculations. So that's part one. Part two then asks us for the moment about the pivot produced by the 2.0 Newton force. Well, that's going to be 2.0 times 0 0.35, which of course is going to be 0 0.70 Newton meters. So that's nice and straightforward. Part three. Now, we're looking for the weight of the bar here and we have already the information that it is a uniform wooden bar so we know the weight will act in the middle. If we had, if we needed to find out the reaction of the pivot because we don't know what that is, then we could be uh, taking moments about here and finding out the moment due to the weight which we write here and then going back and doing our sum of forces equals zero to get the reaction. The question doesn't ask us for the reaction so we don't have to do that. This is a straightforward three simple moments calculations uh, approach. So the moment of the weight, we know the sum of the moments about the pivot equals zero. So we have upwards, we've got this one, 1.05. So going anti-clockwise, we have 1.05. And clockwise, we have our 0.7 from here, plus the moment of the weight. So the moment of the weight has to equal 1.05 minus 0 0.70, which of course is 0 0.35 Newton meters. <laughs>